In today's video, we will be taking a look at this delay off relay. Now you're not going to see these around too often anymore. This was made around 1978. I removed this from some old air conditioning equipment and how this one works. In order to get the relay contacts to close, as you can see right here, you have these two contacts and you have the two above. When this pin is pushed down, what happens internally, this screw and this screw connect together as one. So now it's a closed circuit. When the pin goes up like that, this becomes open on the bottom and the two on top become closed. Now with modern relays, you would have external circuitry which would turn off the power to the relay coil after the set duration has passed, which you would like to have this turn off. With this one, this operates on air pressure. We're going to take this apart and I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Take a look at the whole outside. It's extremely well made, not like the things that are made today out of cheap die cast metal. This is a very quality device you're looking at right here. Alright, let me take off the housing. So what we have is a little bellows type setup at the bottom here, which amazingly is not dried out after being almost 40 years old. Now how this works, you would have a solenoid placed directly above this unit. It could be 120 volts, it could be 12 volts, it could be anything. And the solenoid would have a plunger with a spring on it, and it'd be connected right to that point right there. Once power is applied to the solenoid momentarily, it would shoot the piston outward doing that. Once that happens, then the delay interval would be adjusted by the screw you see right here. Now turning this screw right here clockwise will decrease how long it takes for this to come back up. If I turn this counterclockwise, like I'm doing right now, you'll notice it stays down longer. If I turn it even more, I can get this to stay delayed off for approximately three or four minutes. See it's staying down a lot longer. And it's gradually going up. You'll hear a click in a minute. Bingo. So I can keep turning it more counterclockwise to make it stay on longer after power is removed or I could have it a shorter duration by turning it clockwise. This end right here that you're looking at is where the air pressure from this little bellows goes in and out. There's a check valve in here. When you push it down, it easily allows the air to be pushed out through a check valve. But when it goes, but when it goes back up to try and pull it, this check valve seals and the only other way that air can enter to allow this to reinflate to turn the switch on is through right behind the screw right here. I'm going to take this off and show you exactly how it works behind here. Let's screw this. All right. Slide that out. You have this little brass screw. It looks like something out of a carburetor. Now, way, this could be very hard to see, especially with the lighting the way it is, but way down in this hole is a little tiny port which connects to the inside of this diaphragm, this little, I call it a bellows. And what it does, as this pushes further in, it seals off that port. And when the port becomes totally sealed, air cannot be drawn in from the outside here going past the port where this tip is into that bellows. So when this is slowly turned in one direction, what will happen, the brass will move outward towards the right here, allowing that port to open more, letting air come in from the outside to fill this bellows back up until it pops up and clicks like that. See right now there's nothing in there and it's instantaneous. Now if I turn this all the way in, it will seat tightly in that little port which finds its way to the outside here allowing very, very little air 
to enter on the upstroke when it goes to reinflate like that. It's a really, really neat device, and you just don't see these around anymore. If you do, I haven't seen too many of them, and I've seen a lot of different parts in my day. Now I'm going to take apart the top. We're going to take a look at how it actually triggers that. Let me take the screw off of here. I'm sure if you had to buy one of these, it would be at least $50 to have a quality one like this. All right, so this should pop right off. All right, that's the cover plate in the back. Now you see over here, there's a little tiny metal tab. That clicks back and forth. So when this is all the way down, it likes to stay down because the spring is pulling downward at an angle, keeping it down. As it lifts, the angle of the spring pulling becomes more towards the top, and that's what makes this spring upward like that. What it does on the back is a little clip right here that this tab engages in, and once it locks into that point, you can see the relay, relay contacts will go up and down. And these appear to be silver, very high quality, silver relay contacts. I can put this back, very simple. Tells you right here to reassemble, contact block on timer base, hold operating plunger down, and push toggle blade down. So I'm going to push this down and throw this down. This goes right back in, and now I'm good to go. Put the screw back in there. Tighten it up good. And now we should be back to normal again. Click, click. Let's put this back in too. All right. Really, really easy to work on. If there's a problem, you could change parts. Ones today that are made are a molded cheap plastic and parts can't be replaced. Or well, good luck getting them. And you can see right now it's tightened back up. And now the air is slowly entering when you push down. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this is something you haven't seen before. If you enjoyed the video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my other videos as well. Thank you for watching.